This is part two of how to digitize any custom design into a patch. If you haven't seen the first video, I'll make sure to link it in the description. So we already created the applique and satin border stitch, and now we're gonna get started on doing a fill stitch. So again, I'm going into a six to one scale. So I'm pressing the six on my keyboard. So quick lesson on push and pull compensation for fill stitches. If I drew a shape like this, the machine isn't going to sew this exact shape. An embroidery machine is not like a printer. The reason is because of tension. So you see this line here with the yellow nose at the end. This is saying that the stitches are going to sew side to side in this direction. If I moved it, the stitches would sew diagonally like this. I'm going to leave it horizontal. So as the machine is stitching, the tension is pulling the threads inwards towards the center here, just like the satin border stitch we did earlier. So I'm going to copy and paste this shape. As the machine is pulling, the threads are going to come inwards more like this. And as these threads are coming inwards, it's pushing the top up and the bottom down. And so when you're digitizing, there's something called the push and pull compensation and you can adjust that one of these tabs, no, here. <laughs> you can adjust it in this tab here. So here, if we see like the percentage and I increase it, oh, okay, so now it's adjusting for that pull compensation but I don't really like to use this. I like to manually digitize it because I have a lot more control. So if I click out of this, you can see that the shape that's actually digitized looks much different than the shape that I drew. So I wanna keep this in mind whenever I'm creating any shape. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna start digitizing this leaf. So this isn't like Adobe Illustrator. We're not gonna try tracing this exact shape. We wanna always keep in mind for push and pull compensation. So I'm gonna get started on this fill stitch. And whenever we're working on the side of a shape, we wanna make sure we give extra space. And when we approach a top area or a bottom area, we want to come a little bit short. And again, remember each of these boxes represents a millimeter. So don't be so afraid to get this perfectly right. There's plenty of room for error. So to start drawing, I'm just clicking points. The program will automatically add the curves for me. So again, I'm starting a little bit outside of where I want the finished stitches to be. Oops, back to six to one scale. And I'm just clicking to create the shape. And as I'm approaching this top area, I'm going to flatten it out a little bit and then come out for the side areas. To come around the corner, I'm going to hold the control key on my Mac. That's going to create a sharp corner instead of the curve. So I'm just gonna keep going. You can see here, I don't love how that looks, but that's okay. I'm gonna go back and fix it later. Oh, and to pan, I'm holding the space bar as I click and drag. And if you ever mess up, you just press the backspace. So I'm probably gonna come a little, maybe like just around that line, that's probably good. So I know this is a little bit confusing at first. It's definitely gonna take some practice but it's not as scary as it seems, I promise. <laughs> okay, so to finish off the shape, let me go back one. I'm going to click right over that starting point and then I'm going to right click on my mouse. And if you miss, like let's say you finish off the shape down here, the shape might not be closed, so you wanna make sure this red circle is highlighted. So if I clicked it, now the shape is open. I wanna make sure it's closed. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out real quick. And so here's the leaf. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the color. So I'm gonna click this image, click color, and then click this color. <laughs> and then I'm going to search the color that I wanted. Click okay. All right, so while I was creating those points, I wasn't being too careful, so I wanna go back and sort of fix some of the areas that are a little bit off. 
So back to a six to one scale. I'm gonna click this image. If for whatever reason you don't like the stitches showing and it's getting out of the way, you can click this eyeball and it might be easier to see. So the first thing I want to look out for is excess points. I want this design to have as little points as possible. So I'm gonna start, oops, that wasn't good, okay. So while I'm going in and adjusting the shape, I want to look out for excess points. And so to get rid of excess points, all you do is click the node. And see now the shape got a little distorted, that's okay. I'll click the node next to it and drag on these points to fix the shape. But I'm just going through, getting rid of excess points and then fixing the shape. And again, you can see this really isn't that perfect. So for all my perfectionists out there, don't worry about it. A millimeter is not gonna be visible to the human eye. <laughs> Okay, so now this shape is pretty much done. I'm gonna turn my stitches back on and zoom out. So that looks pretty good. When you see it zoomed in at a 600% scale, it feels like the shape is very off, but when you zoom out to 100% scale, you don't see much of a difference. So now I'm going to edit the actual stitches of the shape. So if I click the shape, and again, I look over here on this right side panel, I see that density is set to four points. And four point is pretty standard. I know that the Madeira thread recommends four point, but I find that it's unnecessarily dense and you're just using extra thread that you don't need to. So I like to go more around 4.5 or even five points. And the bigger the number, the less dense it is. The smaller the number, the more dense it is. A little bit confusing. But I'm gonna set this to five. And then I wanna change the length. So right now it's set to 3.5 millimeters. Again, I think it's a little bit unnecessarily dense. And when it comes to patches where it's just so heavy on the embroidery, we want to reduce as many stitches as possible. So I'm actually gonna increase the length of the stitches to five millimeters. I don't usually go anything larger than five. Sometimes I go to four and a half millimeters. Um, it's all personal preference. Again, you can stitch them out and see what looks best, but five is where I usually like to have it for these big shapes with fill stitches. And then I'm going to go to the underlay tab, which is this second tab over here. Nope, that's wrong. It's this third tab over here. And let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn off the duty stitches. Ooh, it's hard to see. Okay, let's go really close. So you can see there's lines going perpendicular to the shape, and that's because we have perpendicular underlay. So if I unselect that, it gets rid of all the lines going up and down. So I wanna make sure that's selected so it keeps the shape nice and stable. For me, the standard density is always at 17 point, which I think is 1.7 millimeters apart. And again, I don't think that's necessary. I think that makes extra stitches than needed. So I like to bring it all the way up to 32 points. I'm going to turn my stitches back on. And this shape is done. I do want to show real quick how many more stitches this shape would have had if we left the default settings. So right now, if we come down here, I can see that it has 1,924 stitches. So I'm going to copy and paste this real quick and get another one. And I'm going to set this one back to the default setting. So it was at four density, three and a half millimeters, and 17 point underlay. So this is at 2,353 stitches compared to the 1,900 stitches. So that's 400 stitches more, and it's really not necessary. This protects the longevity of your machine. It reduces your material cost, and it just creates a better, more professional, digitized design. So I'm going to delete this. Okay, so I'm going to get started on the sparkles now. Again, using the fill stitch. 
And because the shape is so small, I'm not too concerned about push and pull compensation. So I'm just going to start drawing, following along the lines of the shape, making sure to hold control whenever turning a corner. And then I'm going to right click to close. And I see up here in this area, it's so small that a stitch can't even fit. So I'm just going to adjust. And that's pretty good. Again, this shape is super small, so the little details don't matter too much. I'm going to go ahead and change this color. And I'm going to go to the properties for this because I'm actually not going to give it the same settings as I did to the leaf. For density, I will make it 5. For length, I'll probably come around to 4. It is a small shape, so the smaller stitch size is totally fine. And then under underlay, I'm actually just going to get rid of it. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other sparkle. Now one little thing I'm going to pay attention to when I'm digitizing these sparkles is the jump stitch. So obviously these shapes aren't connected so there will be a jump stitch. So I'm going to turn that on here and I can see the red line, that's where the stitch is going to jump. Now you can leave this as is, that's totally fine. But when a jump stitch is really small, I like to make sure that the points aren't too close to each other. So I'm actually going to move this up. And now it's a little bit longer. This is because when I go to trim this after embroidering, if the jump stitch is super small, it's really hard to go in there and make a clean cut without accidentally cutting any of the stitches underneath. So that looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the shape. I'm going to click the green box to drag it over. And move it over here. And I think I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So normally you don't want to resize things that have already been digitized, but again, the shape is so small, I know that it's not going to make much of a difference. And I'm just going to start this over on this side, maybe up here, just so if the jump stitch is cutting through here, it's not getting in the way when the rest of the shape is embroidering. If you have a machine that cuts jump stitches, it won't make a difference. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off the jumps. And now we are done with the leaf and the sparkles. So this is the end of this video. In the next video, I will be going over the satin stitch and the run stitch. I know we already did the satin border stitch around here, but I'm going to show how to do the satin stitch for other shapes. And then we will do the details in the leaf. <laughs>